the majority of my own career has been in basic research, but because I was driven to become a basic scientist by a curiosity, a, a, a desire to learn more. And um, when I've learned something and been taught something, I have, a, a, I guess, an innate skeptic gene in my brain that tells me, let's really think about this. Why should that be true? And in a sense, that question, why should that be true, is what distinguishes basic research. So if I'm taught a dogma in immunology with my own field, um, I've always had a, a feeling, uh, why, why is that? And believe it or not, sometimes these things are are present as dogmas are taught one generation to another to another as if they were so, as if they were true. And much too often scientists haven't thought to say, well, all right, that's what you have told me and I respect you as my teacher, but let's just think about this. How could this really happen? And what are, what are the fundamentals uh, that are involved in this in this particular bi biological phenomenon. So when you're when you develop a hypothesis, for example, as we often do, as a guess of what's going on, then our duty as scientists is uh, to try to falsify it, and we do that by thinking of every possible alternative that would explain what we've seen. And after we have done that, after we've done our job of looking at every possible alternative explanation to explain it, and we found nothing else, we're sort of comfortable in saying, all right, this is now something that, in my frame of reference, becomes a new bit of scientific information, always with the, with the reservation that uh, time is the fourth dimension in science, as it is everywhere else, and that time will go on and, and what I've done or what you've done or what anyone else has done will be re-examined again with the same skepticism and even well-established research will be found uh, to be uh, not fully uh, responsive to, to the truth and, and uh, it's that search for truth that really drives all of us as scientists. Mm -hmm.